characteristic and Bremsstrahlung radiation. Before we delve into understanding what the terms characteristic radiation and Bremsstrahlung radiation are, let's walk down memory lane and revisit our school days and recollect the diagrammatic representation of our solar system, wherein we have the sun in the centre and all our planets revolving around the sun in their own specific paths called orbits. Keeping this picture in mind, let us move forward and try to recollect of how the structure of an atom is. An atom is the fundamental unit of any element and multiple atoms make an element. Atom consists of a central core or a nucleus similar to the sun in the solar system. It is made of positively charged protons and neutrons that carry no charge and hence the nucleus is positively charged. Together they make up for the mass of the atom or the atomic mass. Similar to the planets in the solar system, negatively charged electrons orbit the nucleus of the atom in their specific parts called shells. These electrons make up the atomic number of an element. Now let's go deeper. An atom can have a maximum of seven shells, designated with letters K, L, M, N, O, P and Q, with K being closest to the nucleus. Keeping this in mind, let's understand how these electrons manage to maintain themselves in their specific parts around the nucleus. This becomes possible because of something called binding energy or binding force. This force is emitted from the central nucleus and attracts the electron to itself, preventing it from wavering, making the atom stable. The closer the electron is to the nucleus, the higher the binding energy. So if an electron needs to be displaced from its path or shell, the energy required to do so will have to exceed its binding energy. Now, as we have mentioned earlier, an atom mostly exists in a stable state, which means the number of positively charged protons is equal to the number of negatively charged electrons. When an atom loses or gains an electron, it becomes unbalanced and is called an ion. These ions are produced by a process called ionization, wherein an electron receives sufficient energy to overcome the binding force holding it in its shell and is displaced out of the atom. Ionization is usually followed by the emission of X-rays. On the other hand, if the electron needs to move closer to the nucleus from an outer shell to an inner shell within the atom, it will have to surrender some energy. This is equal to the difference in the binding energy of the two orbits, emitted as electromagnetic radiation. The displacement of an electron from an inner shell to an outer shell of the atom is called excitation and the energy given out in the form of radiation is called ultraviolet radiation. Pop quiz In our previous videos of the X-ray tube, we have already learned how X-rays are produced when high-speed electrons coming from the cathode collide with the atoms of the target anode made of tungsten. This collision can occur in two mechanisms, thereby giving rise to two types of X radiation, the Bremsstrahlung radiation and the characteristic radiation. Let us first understand what is Bremsstrahlung radiation or breaking radiation. Bremsstrahlung in German means breaking. The high speed bombarding electron or incoming electron from the cathode with a particular kinetic energy will interact with the nucleus of the atom 
of the target material, which is tungsten, in the X-ray tube. Now as the electron gets closer to the nucleus, it will slow down and change direction. To understand this, let us use an analogy. Imagine you are driving a car at a high and constant speed and you want to suddenly turn. The car will slow down when you hit the brakes, but as the car turns, your body still feels the need to continue in the other direction. Similarly, the electron slows down or decelerates and then deflects. Now as the electron changes its course, it loses some of its kinetic energy, which is released in the form of Bremsstrahlung radiation. This is the primary source of radiation from the X-ray tube. Let us better understand this with three examples. In our first example, we have a bombarding electron coming in with a specific kinetic energy and is close to the nucleus. It slows down as it experiences the electromagnetic force and changes its path. The closer the electron is to the nucleus, the stronger the electromagnetic force. The larger the degree of deflection of the electron, the more the loss of kinetic energy, and the greater the Bremsstrahlung radiation energy released. In an X-ray tube, large deflections are less likely to happen, so there are relatively few high-energy photons. In short, Bremsstrahlung's energy is proportional to the kinetic energy that is lost by the bombarding electron. Moving on, let's discuss the second example. If the electron was further away from the nucleus, the electromagnetic force would be lesser. This would lead to less loss of kinetic energy and Bremsstrahlung radiation emitted. This type of small deflection is the most common, producing low-energy photons that do not contribute to useful X-ray beams. Finally, let's talk about the third example. If an electron were to strike the nucleus with a direct hit and lose all of its kinetic energy, the Bremsstrahlung radiation released would be equal to the energy of that bombarding electron. Since multiple electrons go through this process, there will be a wide range or spectrum of energies emitted. And therefore, Bremsstrahlung radiation is also called continuous spectrum or continuous radiation. Next, let us understand the other type of radiation produced within the X-ray tube, the characteristic radiation. Here, the incoming high-speed electron or bombarding electron from the cathode of the X-ray tube collides with an inner shell electron of a tungsten atom, that is the anode in the X-ray tube. When the kinetic energy of the bombarding electron is greater than the binding energy of the inner shell electron, the inner shell electron is ejected out of our target, a process called ionization. At the same time, the bombarding or striking electron is deflected at an angle. The ejected electron is known as the photoelectron, causing a vacancy in the inner shell. To fill the void, an electron from the outer shell drops down into the inner shell, releasing energy, which is equal to the difference between the binding energy of the two shells. Electrons from various shells may be involved, giving rise to other photons. The energies of photons thus created are characteristic of the target atom, and hence this is called characteristic radiation. They contribute to only a small fraction of photons in the X-ray beam. One of the major differences between Bremsstrahlung radiation and characteristic radiation is that in Bremsstrahlung radiation, there is an interaction between the incoming electron and the nucleus. Whereas in characteristic radiation, there is interaction between the incoming electron with an inner shell electron. Now let's take a quick recap of our discussed topic. An atom has a positively charged central nucleus and negatively charged electrons that orbit in specific paths called shells. 
X-ray tubes are used to generate X-ray photons through the interaction of high-speed electrons with atoms of the target material. This process involves the generation of two types of radiation, Bremsstrahlung radiation and characteristic radiation. Bremsstrahlung radiation is produced when electrons are decelerated and deflected as they pass close to the nuclei of target atoms. Bremsstrahlung radiation is the primary source of radiation in an X-ray tube. Characteristic radiation occurs when incident electrons eject inner electrons from target atoms, leading to an electron from an outer shell quickly filling the vacancy. This process releases a photon with energy equal to the difference in binding energies between the two shells. Bremsstrahlung radiation produces a continuous spectrum of energy, while characteristic radiation produces discrete packets of energy. Understanding the production of X-ray photons and the characteristics of Bremsstrahlung and characteristic radiation is crucial for the safe and effective use of X-rays in medical and dental imaging. This brings us to the end of our video. We hope you had fun learning with us.